What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Symfony tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about auto-hiding menu item buttons. So what do I mean by that? Well, I wanna create two buttons for happy hour, one for a happy hour beer and one for a happy hour wine. And I want those to only appear during our happy hour. So that means I want them between 5 and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Every other day I don't wanna have them there on the screen cause I don't want anybody to click them by mistake. So let's take a look at how we would program that. In order to make the menu item buttons appear and disappear, we're gonna use menu levels. So here under the configuration tab, I'm gonna click on menu level sets. And we have two menu levels. We have a main level and a sub level. And we can also create some custom menu levels, but those are not in the scope of this programming. So I'm gonna open my main levels. So I see I already have a single double I'm using these for single and double shot for my liquors. So that means I cannot use my main menu level sets. So I'm going to go with the sub menu levels. So I'm going to claim the first one and I'm going to call it default. Or you can call this regular or however you would like it. And the second one, I'm going to name it happy hour. So now on level one, I'm going to have all of my regular menu items and then the happy hour menu items will only be active on level two. And also I'm gonna make the computer change the sub menu level to level two only between the times that I want it to be active. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And now let's go create our menu items. So I'm gonna go ahead and open menu item maintenance and I'm gonna click a quick search in order to populate my database. I'm gonna use the binoculars here to look for a particular menu item. Since I'm gonna be adding a beer, I'm just gonna look for a bud and I'm gonna click find next just to get to my beer section. And here we have all of our domestic beers. So I would like to add a new one and I'm gonna click insert. I will be using a template since it's easier to add and I'm gonna call this HH beer. Since this is not going to be a specific beer, we're going to have them on rotation, different beers for every day or every week. And I'm just going to name it happy hour beer and it's going to have that special $5 happy hour price. Now taking a look at the number where we will be located here, we are in the 35,000 section and it's going to try and add it in 35,012, which is going to be underneath the Sam Adams. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put it much lower. So I'm going to send it to 35,500 and that is because I want to leave more space between the Sam Adams and this one so I can add more beers in the future without my happy hour beer being right in the middle of them. So my next item is at 36,000 so that leaves me plenty of space. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to hit no. So I added my beer and now I'm going to go ahead and add my glass of wine. So we have glasses of wine here in the 40,000 and let's see where they end. So they end at 40,031. I can just add it with my glass of white wines. So again, I'm gonna click insert. I'm gonna say HH for happy hour wine. And then again, I'm gonna send this to 40,500. So I have plenty of space between this one and where the glass of red wines uh, begin. And I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna answer no again to adding my item. So now I have a happy hour wine and a happy hour beer. So let's go ahead and configure these two. So let's start with our happy hour beer. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. And there we have our happy hour beer. We have our name and is major group beer, family group domestic beer, which is perfect because it inherited everything from my template. So I'm gonna jump to the definition section and add my programming here. So for the menu item class, it's a beer, which is perfect. I don't need to mess with the print class override. And here we have our main menu levels. So if I click the ellipsis here, I can see that this item is available on all levels, which is fine because we're not gonna mess with the main menu levels. However, for the sub menu levels, what I wanna do is remove all of these submenu levels and say that this item is only available when the submenu level 2 is active. So by doing that, I'm going to click OK. So now all my other menu items are going to be available all the time. And then this one will only be available when submenu level 2 is enabled. 
I'm also going to take a look at the screen lookup. So it's under domestic beer. That's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the last thing that I have to check will be my price record. So it's $7.50, but our happy hour beer will be $5. So I'm going to change that price and then I'm going to save it. Next, I'm going to move on to my happy hour wine. So I'm going to scroll back here to find my happy hour wine. And this one is also configured correctly with my major group, my family group. It's all good. I'm going to go to the definition section and it has a menu item class of wine. The print class override is all right. The main level. And again, I'm going to change the sub level. So I'm going to clear this clear all hyperlinks. So I get all my checkboxes off and I'm just going to check happy hour. So again, this button will only be available during happy hour. Also, you have to keep in mind that I am using a screen lookup or an SLU. So because this one will not be available during, for example, sub menu level one, then because I'm using a screen lookup, then the button will just disappear. Please note that if you are using hard coded menu items instead of using screen lookups, the button will still be on the screen. However, the servers will not be able to use it. So either way, it will become inactive. It's just a little bit cleaner with the screen lookup because it completely disappears on that screen when the happy hour is not active. So lastly, we'll go to the price record and our happy hour wine will be $7. So I'm going to add that and then save. And now that we're done with our menu items, we can go ahead and close menu item maintenance. So now we have our menu items set up and we also have our menu level set up. At this point, what we can do is we can definitely add some buttons on the screen and ask one of our managers to push the button to say happy hour is active, which will change the sub menu level to level two and then switch it back. But what I want to do is I want to make this automated. So we also have this feature called auto menu levels. So I'm going to open this up. And as you can see here, I have eight fields where I can define a start time, an end time, a main level and a sub level, and also some option bits, which contain the different days. So the way I'm going to design this is in a sequence. Basically, Symphony reads this in order. So it's going to take a look at line one first. And if the conditions are true, meaning the days are selected and the time frame is correct, then it's going to apply that. If not, it's going to go to the next one and so on. So on line one, I'm going to say that between midnight and 5 p.m. So Symphony speaks uh, military time, so I have to enter 1700 hours. I'm not going to ask it to change the main level. However, I do want it to stay on the default sub menu level. And then I'm going to go to the option bits and I'm going to say this entry is active and I'm going to say it's active on weekdays because I don't want it to be active on Saturday and Sunday. And then I'm going to click OK. So between midnight and 5 p.m., then the default sub menu level is active and between 5 p.m. So I'm going to enter 1700 and this is going to be until seven. So that's going to be 1900. I'm going to switch it to the happy hour sub menu level. And also this is going to be active on all weekdays. So I'm going to have all of them selected. And then again, I'm going to say between 19 back to midnight, then switch it back to the default. So I'm also going to check these. And then I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and save. So that's what it's going to do. Basically, it's going to read this first line and it's going to say, is this condition true? Then it's going to switch this sub menu level. Then if this one is not true, it's going to jump to the second one. So if the first one is not true, is the second one true? Then if this one is true, then I'm going to apply sub menu level two. And if none of those are true, then the third one has to be, then I'm going to switch it back to the default. So that way we have all of the hours covered and that will ensure that our levels are switching correctly. So we can go ahead and close this and test our options. All right, so here we are at one of our workstations. The first thing that I'm going to do is click a quick update to ensure that everything came down correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And as we can see right now it is 8.46 PM. I'm going to begin a fast transaction. I'm going to go to my drink section. I'm going to click on beers. 
domestic beers and I'm gonna look for my happy hour beer. So the happy hour beer is not here which is perfect because I want it to be here between 5 and 7. Let's take a look at the wines and remember we added it under glass of white wine so I don't see it yet. Page down, I don't see anything so that's perfect. Now we'll take a look at how this screen looks like during happy hour. All right, so we're back. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And as we can see right now is 6.50 p.m. So that means we're during our happy hour. So I'm gonna begin a fast transaction, go to my drinks again, into the beer section, and I'm gonna take a look for my happy hour beer. And here it is. So as you can see, the button appeared on its own. So if I ring up a happy hour beer, it rings up correctly at $5. And if we take a look at the wine, add the glass of white wine, we're gonna page down and we can see our happy hour wine ringing up correctly at $7. Now the programming works just as expected but as you can see it's not very obvious where the buttons are. They're exactly the same color and they're just kind of mix and mingle with all the other buttons. So I'm gonna change that and make it a little bit easier for the servers and bartenders to use. So here we are back in EMC and what I want to do is I'm going to add some slew priorities for my happy hour menu items to be further up the line. So I'm going to go ahead and open menu item maintenance again and I'm going to click search to populate my menu items and I'm going to go ahead and look for HH to find my happy hour items. Since I know they have HH in their name I'm just going to click find. So I already found my beer. And I'm gonna go to the definition section here and I'm gonna scroll a little bit to the right. So we have our SLU here and we also have this field called SLU sort priority. So I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna take a look at this particular screen lookup which is the domestic beer. So what we can do is in this SLU sort priority we can add numbers between 1 and 99 in order to sort the menu items in the order that we want. And besides doing that, we can also add specific colors for the different slew priority numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add slew priority 1 for my happy hour beer since I want it to be at the top of the list. So this is it right here. I'm gonna say slew priority 1. And then all the other ones I'm gonna assign them slew priority 99 since they're gonna be on the bottom. And if all of them have slew priority 99, then they're just gonna prioritize themselves alphabetically. So the priority one will appear first and then all this other block here are, is gonna appear alphabetically. So what I'm gonna use is a keyboard shortcut. So what I do is I'm gonna select this field at the top and I'm gonna click the F3 key on my keyboard which is basically a copy key. And then I can click F4 and that's gonna paste the same value and I can just hold down the button and that's gonna paste the values one on top of the other. And that's just a really quick way of copying items and pasting them one on top of the other. So now that I'm done with my domestic beer, I'm gonna move on to my wine. So I'm gonna scroll down since I know my wine is here. So my white wine starts here. And my happy hour wine is all the way here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna enter slew priority one for my happy hour wine. And for the rest of them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually enter slew priority two. So with my wines, I have something very special programmed where all the white wines are on positions one and two, the red wines are on positions three and four, and then the rosés are on five and six. So because of that, I cannot assign these position 99, so I'm just gonna assign them position two. And the difference here is that for positions 1 through 10, you can assign different colors. And then for everything else from 11 to 99, uh, you cannot assign colors. So that's why I'm choosing to continuously use 2 for my glass of white wine because I want the buttons to be white. But for the beers, I don't want them to change colors since I don't need to. So that's why I gave them 99. So now that I've selected all of these and I changed everything accordingly, I'm going to go ahead and save and close my menu item maintenance. So now that the menu items are programmed, we're also gonna have to go to page design to make the buttons change color. So I'm gonna open page design and I'm gonna open my transactions page. And once this open, I'm gonna change my aspect ratio to 16 to nine to match my widescreen workstations. I'm gonna go to my drinks area 
select my beer and I'm going to click on the screen lookup here for my beer. So as you can see, if I move this, this is an entire block or a screen lookup. So I'm going to take a look here at styles. And these are the 10 positions that I was talking about. As you can see, you can assign a different color for each priority level. So if I would have assigned one to my happy hour one and two to all the other ones, then instead of being this bluish color, they're going to turn green. And I didn't want them to do that. So that's why I assigned them 99. Another option we have to take a look at is in the layout section. So we need to make sure that we have this key checked, use sword priority. So make sure this box is checked if you would want your sword priority to work at all. If this box is not checked, then no matter what sword priority you assign, it doesn't matter. And then for the sword type, if any of the keys have the same priority, such as all my regular either beers, I just ask them to sort themselves alphabetically. Uh, the other option is for them to sort numerically and they're just going to take the number that they have. So this is just based on your personal preference. So now that I have assigned my color and I also made sure that my use or priority is checked, I'm going to go to my wines as well. And again, I'm going to click on my slew. So this also has this checked and it assigns itself alphabetically. So that is correct. And now I'm going to go to my styles. So here is what I was talking about in the menu items. So one and two are white. And that's because when I click my glass of white wine, I want all the buttons to be white. And then three and four are red. So when I click the red wine keys, the keys become red. And then then I have four rosés. I have five and six. So I'm not using three different screens. These are actually the same screen and the same screen lookup they're just changing color based on their slew priority. So because both one and two are the same color, that means that my happy hour wine, which will be here at the top, will also be white just like everything else. So I'm going to change this. And for my happy hour wine, I'm also going to make it this emerald green and going to go ahead and save. So I had emerald green for my beer here for slew priority one and I'm also going to have emerald green for my wine. So let's go back to our workstation and see how that looks. OK, so here we are back at our workstation. As always, I'm going to click a quick update and then sign in and I'm going to begin a fast transaction. I'm going to go to my drink section, click on the beers. And as you can see, I have my happy hour beer both at the top and in a different color. So that really stands out very, very well. And if we take a look at the wine, also between all of our glass of white wines, we have our happy hour wine here. So that makes it very, very easy for the servers and bartenders to see it and use it. And since this is going to be a very popular item, that's why I want it to be at the top of the list. Let me know in the comments below how you're going to implement auto hiding menu item buttons and what topics you would like to see featured in a future video. If you are interested in more Symphony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symphony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.